Quit by Healing is about, as the name implies, quitting your porn addiction, but doing it in a very specific way, which is by healing. And today, let's go a bit deeper into that. I have talked about elements of this in many of my shorter content pieces, but today in this podcast episode, I want to take some time to really dissect what does it mean to heal from your porn addiction? How is that different from other approaches you might have seen around quitting porn and overcoming other addictions? And I also want to give you like the basics of the tools of how this is done. To begin, let me tell you a story from my own life that perfectly illustrates what it means to heal or not to heal. So this is about six or seven years ago. I was going through a tough time in part because I was pretty heartbroken from a difficult breakup that I'd recently gone through. And at the time, for me, watching porn was still a daily or almost daily habit. And as one of the things of, you know, basically trying to get my life back together after a difficult breakup, one of the things I challenged myself to was to go porn free for 30 days. As I was going through this period and staying porn free, I really noticed my strong cravings. I really wanted it. And the reason I wanted it is because it was like a painkiller for me. Porn was the thing I used to distract myself from the pain, the heartache I was feeling from this relationship that had ended in a really painful way. And it was the thing that I used to distract myself from the pain of feeling like a failure and from the pain that I was just the emotional pain I was generally going through at the time. I did make it through the 30 days porn free. But the first thing I did on day 31 was watch some porn. And I remember feeling a great sense of relief because again, it was like a painkiller. It was like I endured this pain for 30 days and now finally I could have my painkiller again. This perfectly illustrates quitting without healing because yes, I'd successfully used my willpower to stay away from porn for 30 days, but in terms of actually overcoming my addiction, pretty much nothing had happened. I was ready to jump right back in and make it a daily habit again on day 31. In fact, if anything, after this, I wanted and craved porn more than before the 30 days. I think you can assume that with enough willpower, you can probably extend that further, perhaps for your whole lifetime. You know, maybe you could be using willpower for the rest of your life to stay away from porn and yet the entire time you want it, you crave it, and you're always battling those cravings. And maybe you can implement various strategies to make it easier for you to help you stay away from the thing you crave. But again, you'll still be craving it. And this is very much not what Quit by Healing is about. So what does it mean to actually heal your porn addiction? And again, I can tell you from my own life, the place I am in right now is that I have no interest in porn and I have no cravings for it. So for me, that's the easiest way to remember, the easiest marker of it is if you're healed from this, then you have no interest in porn. This is where I'm at right now in my life. I don't watch porn, not because I'm successfully fighting the urge to watch it. It's because I, I don't have an urge. There's also nothing that triggers me. I can't remember the last time I had this happening or something triggers me and I have to kind of fight the urge to not get into a porn binge. In fact, you could put a laptop down in front of me right now, like with a porn site open and I would just close it. I, I'm just not interested. It's not something I want to spend my time on. That's what it means to be healed. It means that you get to a point where you're spending zero energy and zero time and zero mind share on trying to resist porn. So how does one get there? How does this healing process happen? There are broadly four categories here. The first is addressing the habit loop. So just addressing essentially just the mechanisms by which you currently keep watching porn we have to interrupt those habit loops. And that's where a lot of habit design and other strategies comes in, to just interrupt that cycle that you've been in for a long time. But that's only one component. The second component is introspective work, where you do things to cultivate a deeper awareness, and you do things like shadow work to deal with the underlying issues that made you an addict in the first place. The third component is to bring healthy dopamine sources into your life because addiction is in part a dopamine problem. You've gotten used to a certain kind of instant gratification and extreme stimulation, and that is overriding and in some ways compromising your, your normal motivation and reward-seeking mechanisms. So you want to eliminate the, the junk dopamine that you get from porn and other sources like it I want to replace that with healthy dopamine, which basically just means that you get to a point where you are normally motivated to make something of yourself and to do things in your life that are other than consuming stuff like porn, which is just to say that that's the natural balance. It's a natural healthy balance. That's what the system is there for. You're supposed to be motivated 
to go out and make things happen. You're supposed to have drive and motivation to do things in life. But like I said, something like porn addiction and other junk dopamine sources essentially wreck that system. And this is why many addicts end up being pretty apathetic and lethargic and depressed. And then the fourth factor is various lifestyle factors, such as your diet and exercise and sleep habits and so on, which all can play a big part in the healing process. It can especially make a big difference in whether you heal quickly or slowly. So in short, if you have a crappy lifestyle, you, have, you don't get enough rest, you have a crappy diet, you're deficient in all kinds of nutrients and things, you can still heal your porn addiction, but there is a, a physiological process that needs to happen here. With a poor lifestyle, that's just going to be slower. It's just like if you break a bone or you have another injury and your diet is rubbish, it'll still heal eventually. It'll just take longer. But if you have a good lifestyle, you eat the right kinds of foods, you give yourself enough rest, then that healing process is much, much faster. Well, the same is true for rewiring your brain and healing from an addiction. So in short, the four factors are the habits themselves, interrupting the habit loop, doing the introspective psychological healing work, getting healthy sources of dopamine and lifestyle factors. I've spoken about most of these extensively in other content pieces. And in my next podcast episode, I'll go really deep into the lifestyle factors. So today, let me focus on the second factor of these four, on the psychological healing, on the introspective work. My thinking on how this healing process worked and what I've based a lot of my own experimentation on as well is heavily influenced by the work of Gabor Mate. And if you don't know who Gabor Mate is, I recommend that you look him up. He has many excellent podcast interviews. He's appeared on many podcasts. He also has books that are worth reading. If you just type his name into search engine or into YouTube, you'll immediately find some sources as a starting point. I would recommend that you give that a listen if you want to dive a little deeper into these ideas from who I think of as one of the leading experts when it comes to addiction recovery. One of the ideas that I got from him is that really every addiction starts out as some kind of a survival strategy or some kind of a coping strategy, which is to say that whatever your addiction is, whatever the substance is that you use, in our case that we porn, is something that helps you survive or get away from something that you perceive as worse than the addiction. Now, if we think back to the story I told you about my own experience of being heartbroken and then, you know, quitting porn kind of reluctantly and immediately starting again, that actually illustrates really well exactly this principle. Porn was what I used to distract myself from and escape the pain from that breakup and from that relationship that had unfolded pretty disastrously. That comes with a lot of emotional pain, and I did not want to deal with that emotional pain. I did not want to think about this relationship, think about all the mistakes I had made. I didn't want to look at that and learn the painful lessons that come with it. I basically just didn't want to think about it and feel that pain at all. And porn, even though I was aware that this wasn't a healthy habit, porn was something that I much preferred over dealing with all that emotional pain. Your porn addiction does something similar for you, even if you're not aware of this at all. It helps you escape something that you don't want to deal with. This is what I usually call the underlying cause or the underlying issue. It's the thing that made you an addict in the first place. Some common underlying causes for porn addiction are the following. Sexual shame and feelings of sexual inadequacy. Loneliness and the feeling that you, you can't create a good dating life or love life for yourself. Like a feeling of powerlessness when it comes to actually creating real romantic and sexual connections. Anger, resentment and other negative feelings often directed at women in general, but also at yourself. A lack of self-love and self-acceptance, a general feeling that you're never good enough. Emotional pain from previous romantic and dating experiences, such as rejections, trauma from being in a toxic relationship, painful breakups, and so on. This pain then tends to resurface whenever you think about anything related to dating and sex and love, or whenever you try and make an attempt to reconnect with someone in real life. And again, that pain can then send you back into your cave and back to porn as your painkiller, so to speak. So these are just some of the examples that are very common that once you start digging, even if you're completely unaware, once you start digging and you start exploring why did I become a porn addict in the first place and what happens, what comes up 
when I take this painkiller away? These are some of the common answers. And of course, there may also be others that I haven't mentioned here, and it also might be a combination of several of them. And here's the key insight. As long as you do not address and do something about these underlying issues, you do not heal from your addiction. So if we go back to my story, I managed to stay porn free for 30 days without doing anything about the underlying issues. And that's why I went straight back to porn once my 30 day challenge was done. I made zero or close to zero progress on the underlying issues, which is why I remained fully addicted. This is also why what can happen is that you jump from one addiction to another. So you might successfully quit porn, but then you start smoking weed more than ever before, or you get addicted to doom scrolling on social media or something else. You're essentially switching one painkiller for another, which in some cases, you know, maybe it's better, slightly better for your brain health to be addicted to social media than to be addicted to porn. But it's not really where you want to end up. It is still not healthy. It's still not good for you. And it's not a recipe for a great life. So this is the key insight and the key idea. You have to find out what is the underlying issue that drives this addiction. What is the pain that I'm trying to avoid? And then you have to do something about it in order to actually heal. So once again, if we go back to my story, once I started actually confronting the painful feelings and the painful lessons that had come from that very difficult relationship, I could start to overcome that. I also had to grieve that, right? I had to go through a grieving process where I was just very sad for a while for the loss I had experienced. I had to get that out of my system. I had to learn the lessons from that. And then that was no longer something that drove me to porn. However, I also had other issues, and I've mentioned this before, for me, sexual shame was a really big one that kept driving me back to porn. And it's the same thing. I had to identify, okay, it's the sexual shame and the sexual inadequacy and the fear of my own sexuality and my own sexual power that keeps sending me back to porn. And until I address that, that's not going to change. So once again, I had to explore these topics in my life. I had to confront these fears I had. And once I had resolved these issues, that's when I got to the point where I lost interest in porn. I didn't need this coping mechanism anymore. Now, how do you do this? How do you actually resolve these underlying issues? I wish I could give you a one size fits all answer here, a simple answer, but unfortunately that's part of the work is that you, you have to figure out what's going on. The easiest answer, I guess, is find a good therapist. Although even that is, is not that easy, right? Because there's many therapists, but not all of them are good and not all of them will be able to help you competently with your specific problem. Plus, you have to have the resources in order to be able to go to therapy, which not everyone has. But I also have to say, although, you know, find a good therapist is a good and reasonable default answer, I also want to say that self-therapy can be extremely effective. You can achieve a lot just working through these things by yourself. The most powerful tool I have ever found for doing this is introspective writing. And introspective writing is a specific approach to journaling where you generally start out with some pain point and your pain point in this case would be, why am I addicted to porn? Why do I keep falling back into these bad habits? And you start digging into that through writing. And you can ask through writing, you can ask yourself questions such as, what am I getting out of this? What is this distracting me from? What is the thing in my life that I want to not deal with? And so instead, I watch porn. And you'll find that writing about it brings much greater clarity than just thinking about it. In fact, if you make it a habit to do introspective writing and to ask yourself questions like this, you will sometimes be really surprised at what happens. This isn't always the case. Don't expect a miracle as soon as you start writing. But sometimes what happens is that you ask a question and answers start pouring out of you that you had no idea were inside you. It can happen that within one writing session or a couple of writing sessions, you get to depths of your psyche that you didn't know you could access and you gain clarity about things that were completely mysterious to you before. And it's hard to explain why this happens. In fact, I don't know why this happens, but there's something about doing this kind of writing that can really help you tap into some kind of intuition or maybe access your subconscious in a way that 
if you were just sitting here and thinking about it, or if you were just talking to a friend about it, it wouldn't happen. So that's my number one recommendation is start practice introspective writing. Make a habit out of doing this type of writing, out of exploring your psyche and asking yourself tough questions through writing. Another kind of generic answer for how to do the healing process is to practice meditation. And I do agree that meditation can be very useful because it is a way to cultivate awareness. And this awareness will help you interrupt the cycle of addiction. It will help you catch yourself before you relapse. So that's very, very useful. But it can also help you with this kind of thing. Like cultivating awareness will help you understand your own processes, your own thought processes and emotional processes. And that's something like, you know, the typical mindfulness meditation of which you can find loads of examples. You can find guided meditations like this easily on the internet. This can be really useful. But also I would take this a step further and say do specific shadow work type meditations. If you want an example of this, you can join my Discord for free and the link will be in the video description and in the podcast description. So if you click that link, you can join my Discord and one of the things I share there is a free shadow work course. That is kind of a combination between writing exercises and meditation style exercises, but it's meant to help you uncover some of these underlying things and work through them, process through them. This is hard work and it's hard work because it generally confronts you with stuff that you have been successfully avoiding, maybe for years or even decades. You might feel really strong resistance to confronting these things and, and starting to think about these things and write about these things. And it might bring up a lot of maybe very old emotional pain. So it's not an easy thing to do, but what you'll find is that in general, when you start confronting these things, when you start dealing with the underlying issues, yes, it's painful, yes, it's unpleasant, but it does pass. As long as you're pushing it away, as long as you're keeping the painful stuff away, it's kind of always hovering there in the background. It's always threatening you. Whereas if you say, okay, if I go through these emotions, okay, here are these painful emotions and memories, but now I'm actually willing to experience this pain actually willing to learn the lessons of some past mistakes and so on. What will happen is that, yes, it'll be unpleasant. You might feel sad and angry and you might feel all kinds of emotions go through you, but then it passes and it's done. And it's no longer hovering there in the background. And in that sense, it's kind of less painful than not dealing with it. Because if you're not dealing with it, it's always there. It's kind of always like chronic stress, right? So you're always slightly stressed. You're always slightly anxious about it. Whereas... Once you confront it, you go, okay, that was really unpleasant. You know, maybe you have a really bad week as you're dealing with some of this stuff, some of this shadow work type stuff, but then you're better. And this is in fact a super important skill to learn and a really valuable skill to learn in general, right? Like how, what do you do with difficult emotions? What do you do with emotional baggage and bad memories and things like that? Well, introspective writing and shadow work and these types of exercises give you a tool set to actually work with this stuff and no longer be at the mercy of it. So that is what the healing process looks like in practice. Now, as a starting point, I recommend doing the thing I mentioned here. You know, a good starting point is just get pen and paper. Ask yourself, what am I getting from this addiction? What thing is it helping me escape? What is the thing that I don't want to confront and therefore I look at porn instead? And see if through a writing session or maybe through several writing sessions, you can gain some clarity about that. That will put you in a much more empowered position than you are in right now if all of this stuff is totally subconscious. If there are some topics in here and ideas in here that you want me to expand on, let me know. You can leave a comment on the YouTube video or you can go to anchor.fm forward slash QBH. That is anchor.fm forward slash QBH for quit by healing. You can click the message button there and leave me a voice message that I can answer on future episodes. And like I mentioned, you can get a lot of additional resources as well as join a community of guys who are all quitting the porn habit and leveling up their life together by joining the Quit by Healing Discord completely for free. The link is in the podcast notes as well as in the video description.